My birth name was Johann Marek, and I was born in Poland, June 18, 1940. That was like during the war. And we had a big farm, help on their farm and stuff like that. And the war started and everything else. Well, it didn't start, but already was in progress, kind of, because the Germans came over and tried to take over Poland. And then Russia and everybody else got into it. And we, I was there for about, I'd say, three to five years. And in that time, when the uh, Germans started to retreat, the Russians came in and kind of took over everything and kind of burned down anything they didn't trust. And they didn't trust us because they thought we were hiding some Germans in our barn. They wanted to kill them, you know, because they were worried about them. So they burned down the farm. We told them we didn't have any, but they told us to take one horse and a wagon and pack up the stuff that we wanted and leave. So we did that, and then they burned down the farm. But there was Germans in there. They, I guess they got burned. Do you know where the farm? That was in Josefovo, Poland. So we were there, and then we had to go and travel, and we were like gypsies. Who, that was my ma, he, Walt, my cousin, and me. Everybody else, my dad, him, and my brother got either drafted or taken by the Germans. And they were in a German army, and they, my dad, I don't know whether he got killed or what, but my brother got killed, and he's buried in Germany. We got the grave number and everything else of him. So if what I was, was his name? Edwin. He got killed, and we, and I don't know where he got killed or how he got killed, but they have his dog tag and everything else, so they got him buried. We never visited him because... We didn't, we're, when we went to Germany, we didn't have any transportation to go anywhere. So we were on a wagon like gypsies, and we were wandering from one place to the next place. And wherever we found, we stayed. Sometimes it was on a farm. Sometimes it was what we called uh, a logger there. And that was like a barracks or a empty house or in a basement, wherever it was. And sometimes we cooked. And there was a basement that was full of, well, I'd say about maybe a foot of water, but we stayed there because when it rained, at least it was kind of dry and everything else. So we did. In the wintertime, I ran through the snow to kill all the fleas. No. They were, eating. Oh, yeah. oh, they were eating us like crazy to kill them. And that was good for about three hours and then we did it all over again and as far as food was we went out begging sometimes for food and sometimes we found some food and what the soldiers left or couldn't take or leftovers and we ate that and then what around I'd say 47 48 we wound up in Germany, going back in there. And I remember when we were there, they took us through, I would say like a medical clinic and they got rid of, uh, checked us for any kind of diseases and not mainly it was the fleas. And they put all kind of powder on us. I thought, that, I don't know for sure, but it was baby powder. They sprayed us with baby powder. You come out there on the other side, you're completely white. <laughs> completely white. And then they set you down for about, I'd say, half an hour. And they took a shower and washed everything else off. And from there, I guess they asked the government who wanted us, and we wound up on a farm. Jens Boat's farm. We stayed there till 51. And in uh, those days, they 
took any kind of uh, help we could get. So we kind of lived in a barn. They had a five, I think they had five stalls there and they took the cattle out of there and kind of fixed it up and put us in there. So my mom, Ewald and I lived in a uh, maybe 10 by 10 room from, like I said, 47, 48 till 51 when my mom's aunt brought us over here. I don't know how my ma and they got together, you know what I'm saying. And we came over here, actually we were supposed to come on a passenger boat, but I should say ship, but that was full. So we couldn't do that date, but we stayed in Hamburg and they had a freight ship that took on some passengers to the United States. And it wasn't big, but again, small and everything else. And we made it over. I think it took us about two weeks, or maybe not quite that, but someplace. It I know it took us a long time. My cousin was sick and didn't have no medical on the freight ship or nothing. So he was laying in a tub every time and he said, I was, what was it? I think it was oranges. That's the only thing he, he was eating is oranges. Sometimes on, they, were, they weren't all rough, but there were some days they were really rough. And when it wasn't rough, he'd come out and eat a little bit and everything else. Finally, we made it to uh, New York. Ma's uh, sister sponsored us. So we got checked out in Germany about any diseases or sickness or anything else. So we didn't have to go through Ellis Island or any of those. Those people that came through there, they never were sponsored by anybody. Yeah, and they were checked out, not checked out. So we got checked out. And then uh, from there, somehow we went into, uh, I think by taxi, to a railroad station. And we came from New York to Detroit when the railroad was there in 51. I think that was Grand Station. Can't remember that long. Uh, we went in there, and our aunt and uncle picked us up from there, and we stayed with them for uh, about a year, because those days, if anybody sponsored on you, you could not go on any kind of government assistance. They had to take care of you uh -huh. in, a, in a hospital or anything, else. they had to pay the bill. You know, in other words, they sponsored you for yeah. a whole year. After that, we moved out of there, and Ma, I went to school, and Ma, and well, actually, E was older, and I think he went to school a little later. I mean, to school, and a little later, he found a job in a bakery. And Ma, I, I don't know what they call these factories, that used to make these, uh, oh, they were, um, like drawings where you had uh, numbers on you and you had to draw black or blue or whatever, you know, and then you make a drawing. She made those. He worked for a bakery for a while and he put an application in for a Hudson department store and he worked in the Hudson, uh, not in a department store, but in their repair shop for mm. trucks. When the trucks came in, had a flat tire or anything, he went out and repair them. He worked there till he got laid off later in his life and he collected a pension. I don't know, it wasn't a big pension in there. And me, I finished school, then I worked for Borden's Milk Company and then I went in the service. Before I went in the service, I met my wife Joan. She was 14 oh. and I was 16. And then we stayed together, and then I went in the service, came back. I got drafted back then, and I went in the service. 
and I went overseas and to Korea for a year, 18 months, and I came back. And then I got let out out of the service. And then, yeah, then I got a job in the small shops here and there, and then finally I got into Chrysler. Yeah, I started at Chrysler 62 and we got married in 63. Yeah, May 15, 63. And we had two kids, and I stayed with Chrysler's for quite a while. Well, 40 years, pretty close. And that was it. And then I'm in Detroit, and then I retired. I'm over 80, so I always say, how are you? I'm saying, great, but I got one foot in the grave and the other foot on a banana peel and steady slipping. Well, thank you for doing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. yeah all right. You gonna come with us? Yeah. Uh, I'm almost ready. And what's your uh, catchphrase nowadays? You got that right. <laughs>